Hello, Keith Rucker here at FinishMachinery.org. Guys, today we're at the Horizontal Milling Machine, and uh, today's project, we're going to be making a custom uh, bar to go in this machine that can spin a single point cutter to do an upcoming job that I've got uh, to make a, a spline. It's an unusual spline. I don't have a regular horizontal milling cutter that I can put on here to cut that. I could have one made, but guys, it's, it's, it's a one-off job. It's seven splines. I, it just, to me, it doesn't seem to warrant spending the money and taking the time to have a custom cutter ground when I can just do it out of high-speed steel. So here's the game plan. I've got just an end mill holder in here. I've got a piece of metal. Uh, this is a piece of uh, inch and five-eighths uh, steel. And a uh, big thank you to viewer Tim Miller who uh, was kind enough to send this in to me. I mentioned that I was gonna be needing to make a bar to do this job, and he uh, volunteered to send me a piece of steel to make it out of, because I'd commented that I was gonna have to buy a piece, and that was my plan. Uh, but uh, he came in to the rescue and sent me a piece of steel. So thank you very much, Tim, for that. Um, fairly simple project. We're gonna take this, I'm gonna turn it down inch and a quarter on this end where it will fit into this end mill holder. I'm going to turn a section down on this end, uh, inch and a quarter where a bushing will fit up over it that will ride in my overarm support here, just like a, 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 you know, an arbor to put cutters on. But instead of putting cutters in here, we're gonna drill and uh, broach a square hole for a piece of 3 8 inch high-speed steel to go into. We'll put a set screw in it. And basically this will just allow that cutter to turn around. It'll be a, a single point uh, horizontal milling cutter, basically. Instead of having a bunch of cutters on a circular one, we'll just have one single one. It'll be a little bit slower, uh, but it'll get the job done. So that's the game plan. I've got a sketch here of what I want to make, and we're going to go make it. Let's uh, get this knocked out. So I got a little chicken scratch drawing here of the arbor we need to build. Again, inch and five eighths uh, stock is what we've got. I'm gonna cut it 24 inches long. Uh, on this end, we're gonna turn it down to inch and a quarter. That will fit up into that end mill holder. Uh, and on the other side, we'll also turn it to inch and a quarter. And that's where a bushing is gonna slide up on. We'll thread the end and treat it just kind of like you would a, um, a regular horizontal arbor, horizontal milling machine arbor. Uh, just put the bushing on the end and that'll allow it to float. Now in the center of this, so we're gonna drill and uh, broach a 3 8 inch square hole that will allow the high speed steel to go into. We'll put a cross drill that. We'll put a, a set screw in there to adjust the length. And this will make a nice um, kind of a boring bar type setup. Uh, but in this case, we're not gonna be boring with it. We're gonna be actually uh, grinding a custom profile and uh, cutting a spline with it. Uh, I've been needing to build a bar like this for a long time. I've actually had in the past several times that I needed a bar like this and I ended up going about doing the project a little bit different way because I just didn't want to take the time to build it. Uh, this will be something that gets used again in the future. This is basically like a boring bar and you can use this as a boring bar on your, your uh, milling machine to do like line boring. Uh, if you have for certain applications you, where you need to do so, a small line bore, if it's small to fit on the milling machine, you can uh, just put a regular cutter in there and, and bore a hole out. A uh, very, very handy little feature and something that we, we did quite often in, in a previous job that I had on the horizontal mill machine using a bar very similar to this. So uh, looking forward to having this for future jobs down the road as well. All right, let's uh, get over there and start uh, making this bar. We're over at the marble saw and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. I got it marked for two feet long. I got about a foot extra there and actually be making another part out of some of that material later on. But um, let's go ahead and get this cut. All right, we'll let it rip across there. There we go. All right, we're set up over here in the lathe. I've got a steady rest supporting this uh, because it's sticking out so far. I am gonna put a center in this to get some support, but I need to get this faced off first and uh, get that drilled in there before we can actually put it in. So that's gonna be step one. Then we're gonna turn this down to inch and a quarter. Um, I got my links there. Uh, both sides go to inch and a quarter, but they go different lengths in. So we'll figure that out in just a minute. Let's start with uh, facing. 
And one thing I'm gonna be watching here is I, I know that I've got my cutter set on center. Now, one thing with like when you're using a steady rest, like I'm using here, uh, you can manipulate the height of the, the, the work. And if you see, it's that little bit of, or I didn't quite get it, and my cutter is under it. So I need to come down just a touch. So I'm gonna make a little adjustment here. I'm just gonna loosen up my two bottom pieces just a little bit. And we'll take the top one and just kind of push it down tight. And now I'm gonna do that again. and see how I, I got it that time. So I've actually got that part running pretty well on center. So that's a really easy, quick way to kind of tell and something you have to watch when you are using a steady rest. Let's get that uh, face real good. Looks good. We're gonna turn that outside out a little bit so that little bit that didn't quite clean up, it's not gonna matter. And I'm gonna come in with a center drill and uh, we'll just go ahead and put a center in this end. All right, that should be plenty to give me some support out there uh, to turn this. All right, we got that center in there now. That will support it as well. I'm just gonna leave the steady rest on though. It's not gonna hurt anything. And we need to, let's do the long end first. Four and three quarter inches in. About right there is where I need to go. And I might have to, let's see, is that gonna come all the way in there? No, I'm gonna have to move my steady rest down just a little bit. All right, that should give us plenty of room. All right, let's uh, turn that diameter and we're going to inch and a quarter. All right, we should be taking off about 100 thou here. We got a pretty uh, fast feed rate going. Looks like we need to fuzz off about six and a half thou, just using the calipers, and that's all I'm gonna do here. I'll come in here and touch back off again. And we'll just uh, fuzz a few off. It should give us a good starting point to remeasure and um, get this thing right where it needs to be. All right, here's our bushing that goes up into the uh, overarm supports. And the next thing we need to do is uh, thread this end for a nut to tighten that up. And I'll need to just thread it a little bit past that mark. And let me go figure out what pitch we need and I'll get set up for threading. I think we're set up here ready for uh, threading. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, put a pretty good chamfer on that front edge using my threading tool. So I have the same uh, angle going on there, that's plenty. And we're gonna come in here and touch off. About right there. We'll feed in a little bit. This is gonna be 12 threads per inch. So I should be set up on 12. Let me let a number come around over here and we'll 
cut across there and we'll check it with our thread pitch gauge here in just a minute. Looks like 12 and it is 12. All right, let's uh, see if we can knock this out. I want to actually thread past that mark there. Make sure I have plenty of uh, threads in there. Put a little lube on this. That metal is really, really hard, or at least it appears to be. So I'm make sure we don't get in a mess here. All right, here we go. You can tell every time it hits that, that that cutter's getting a lot of uh, back pressure on it. I don't know what is going on. I'm gonna do a, just a spring pass there, trying to catch up a little bit. Uh, some hard, hard steel. Not quite. This um, piece of steel that I'm working with, I've said it a bunch. It is really, really hard. This carbide's cutting it, but I just can't take very much at a pass. And it's just moving this, uh, everything around like it's butter. I don't know what to say. We'll get it. See that tool bounce back? That's just full tool pressure. And it's just putting that much onto the whole compound here. And then uh, I'm taking about two or three. I didn't even feed in there. Um, we're gonna give it a try on this one and see if that does it. But um, that is really some hard metal. I was noticing that when I was turning over in the other places, it was just really slow going. We still need a little bit more out of there. I think we got it here. Here's our nut. And she rolls right up on there, just like she should. So um, I think we got this side done. I'm gonna break that corner right there just uh, because, and we'll flip this thing around and get the other side machined. Got my part turned around and we need to do some turning on this side as well. This one's gonna fit up into that uh, end mill holder. It needs, also needs to go two inch and a quarter, but only about two and a half inches deep. So um, anyway, we're gonna face it and uh, go ahead and put a center in there for, give us a little more uh, stability while turning and then turn her on out. I'm taking a little bit lighter cut, trying to 
to deal with this thing not wanting to cut. It had it moved it in the chuck again, and that's when I tightened it up. That's why we have that little bit of a centric in there. But uh, I'm going to about a forty thousandths cut versus a hundred thousandths cut, and that seems to be making a big difference. It's going to have to take my time and work through this. Right, I think we got this turned down to size. This is the uh, end mill holder that we'll be using. And let's see if it'll fit up on there. There it goes. It's hitting that set screw, but yeah, that's gonna be fine. It's a nice, nice tight fit. Got to work. I'm gonna break those corners and uh, I think we're done with our turning. Next thing we need to do is we need to drill a hole all the way through this that we're going to broach to a 3 8 inch square. And according to um, my brooch, I need a 25 64 inch uh, clearance hole through there. So I've got this set up over in the mill machine. I've got this uh, shaft sitting on two V blocks that are narrower than the shaft, so it's, it's level. And um, we're going to put the mark, put the hole right about where that mark is. The um, spacing from end to end is not critical at all. I just got it roughly halfway in between, just using a tape measure. Now we do need to get it in the center in this direction, so I'm gonna use my um, edge finder. We'll find the edge of both sides of this, use a digital readout, calculate the center, get our cutter on center, and uh, we should be ready to drill. So let's go ahead and knock this out. Drop that down, and I realize you probably can't see the edge finder in the screen there, but right there. Double check it again. Yep. We'll come up and over. And down over here, find that edge right there and we'll use our half function on the digital readout and we'll just take it to zero which is right there that should be in the center of the shaft now we'll get our drill bit in here get that lined up and we'll be ready to go start with a uh, center drill here just to kind of give me a little starting point there for that drill bit so it doesn't jump off that round surface uh, and we'll put a drill bit in here now and drill that clean through and here we go All right, there we go. That'll give us our clearance hole for the uh, brooch. And I think as long as I'm set up over here on the mill, I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole for the uh, set screw that will set that. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is we'll loosen this up. And let's see, we'll clean this off here okay that's back where it was and mark 90 degrees on the end of the shaft and we'll just uh rotate that turn that mark straight up and down. This is not a, it doesn't have to be perfectly perpendicular, but we want to get as close as we can and we want it to intersect that line or that other hole. Let me uh, figure out what drill bit we need to hear for our set screw and we'll get that one in there as well. All right, we are going to drill and tap a 5 16 18 hole in here which needs a uh, 1764 uh, pilot. So once again, we'll get our 
spot there where we want our hole to be. We've got a 1764 drill bit here. And we'll just drill it until it intersects. Right there. And go ahead and uh, just countersink it a little bit there. That'll just help that tap get started on it. All right, I got a tap in here. Got a little bit of anchor lube on it. I've got a tap follower. This is a little spring loaded center. And since we got it set up on the same uh, hole we drilled on here, this just kind of helps line everything up and keep it lined up going down through this hole. And we'll just take our time and hopefully uh, get this hole tapped out without no problem. I'm breaking that chip by coming backwards in here. I don't want to load this tap up too much. This metal has been really hard and really tough. And uh, I don't want to risk breaking a tap in this thing. So breaking that chip just kind of helps keep things clear and hopefully we won't break a tap. I think it's coming through the hole down there. I feel it getting loose all of a sudden. Yeah, there we go. All right, now it's hitting on the bottom and we will take that out and come on up with it. Over at the Arbor Press, we're gonna use a square brooch now to actually take that round hole and make it square. And the way this works is, is there's a bunch of individual cutters on this uh, brooch and it starts out more or less round in the bottom. And each cutter becomes more and more square, gets a little bit larger until you get a nice 3 8 inch square. It will have a little bit of um, scallops in the straights where the drill bit's just slightly larger, but it's gonna get us mostly a square hole here. So um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some cutting oil on this brooch, make sure it's well lubricated and we'll probably lube it up some more as we go along here. We'll start working our way through this hole, just pushing it one little bit at a time. You can see it going down and it's as it goes down, it's going to make a deeper and deeper cut into that metal until we get all the way through. Man, this metal's tough. That's pushing a lot harder than what I like to be, but we're gonna see if we can get it through. Hopefully we don't break a brooch. That would suck. Now, one thing I do like to do periodically is I just kind of take the pressure off of this to make sure that it's, it's going straight. That just kind of resets it. 
and uh, push it straight down on there. Use a little little bolt here and push the rest of the way on through. There we go. Tighten up that overarm support and uh, pull it back up over that bearing now. We're not going to run it. I'm not going to worry about oiling it at the moment, but that looks good. Well, there you go, guys. You can see how this is going to work. Uh, we'll cut our profile into that cutter. This arbor will turn and work just like a horizontal milling cutter. It's just going to have one tooth instead of multiples. Uh, it'll work just fine. Done this many times in the past. Now, um, I am going to get my blank set up uh, that we need to cut the spline on. And I will probably use a regular uh, horizontal milling cutter to remove most of the material in that slot and then come just finish it with this uh, arbor and set up here rather than trying to cut the whole depth. I think it'll just go a little bit easier, a little bit, uh, put a little bit less stress on the tool. And I do have to get the right tool ground and made and everything like that. Uh, you can see the set screw hole there that will hold it in place. But uh, I think this is gonna work great. All right, there you go. One uh, arbor, one custom arbor made. And with that, I think we got this project knocked out. We got our custom uh, bar made here that we're gonna be using for doing a spline with a custom uh, um, profile that I don't have a cutter for. And we'll get it knocked out. Uh, Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching that. We'll be continuing this project down the road, uh, cutting that spline. I'll go ahead and get the blank done. We'll get the dividing head set up over here on the middle machine. Like I said, we'll probably use a regular cutter to get most of the metal out and then use this one here to get that last little profile to get it finished up and just like we want it using a custom boring bar or for a custom job. It's part of the work, fun of working in a machine shop is a, uh, if you need something special like this, you can just go make it yourself. And that's exactly what we did here. Guys, that'll be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are greatly appreciated. They help out a lot with the YouTube algorithms and uh, help our videos be discovered and seen by other people. So please do that if you don't mind. A uh, big thank you to all the Patreon supporters and other people who have supported the site. Tim, Tim Miller, who's provided the medal for this, for example. Thank you very much. Uh, couldn't get all the things we get done out here without all of your help. And with guys with that, we will catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.